Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Today's guest is really excited to be here, as are we to have him because he is from Royersford, Pennsylvania. He went to Mount St. Mary, Mary's University in Emmitsburg, uh, Maryland, and he majored in accounting and played on the club ice hockey team. I want to know some things about this, and I bet you do too. In his junior year, he started to screenwrite. And this is where things began to change for him because he has since then wrote six feature length scripts in addition to a TV pilot. And he was able to make his first script, which I'm, I'm going to let him share with you today because I am beyond excited to talk about this based on the sort of coincidence that happened that put the two of us together. And I won't go into a lot of details, but completely separate things going on, but there was some common ground and then it just ended up um, sort of surfacing into where we're at right now with this. And I am just so excited. It recently premiered at the Malibu Film Festival and it won the best first feature film I'm super excited. He wrote, directed, produced, and edited the film all on his own. Incredible skills and talent. He also worked as a production assistant on the feature film mm -hmm. Annihilation of Self, which is currently in post-production. And many who are watching and listening that may be from the South Philly area could be familiar with his last name. There's a little trivia for those of you um, who may know Lero, the Lero Candy Company. The John Lero Candy Store is on Broad Street and named after his great great grandfather who founded it in 1916. And Anthony has written a feature film about the life of his great great grandfather, which he hopes is going to make it out one day. Welcome to the show, Anthony Lero. Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks for having me. Well, I am delighted because our paths crossed for this out of this really bizarre circumstance. And so I knew somebody and then I was talking to somebody. And when they mentioned you, I said, oh, man, I have to talk to Anthony. There's just no way about this because I need to know some answers to these questions I had about what we're going to talk about today. And so tell me, when you first got it started in your writing, did you think you'd be where you're at now? Um, honestly, I did. I mean, I didn't think I'd be making a movie this quickly. Um, but I mean, I sort of had the mentality that, um, that I was going to make it. It just might take a little bit. I mean, I still, I mean, obviously this was a small micro budget film, but, um, you know, I, I, I was always pretty confident. I mean, if you sort of bet on yourself, then, you know, you believe in yourself, no one else will. And, um, and I firmly, uh, and I got really lucky with this uh, as well. So you said something that's really important for those who are watching and listening is the power in having the confidence within yourself. And sometimes I think we have to fake it till we make it. I, I can do this. Exactly. I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> so we just keep going in our mind to push us through this because really I think we're our own worst critics and I think we're our own best audience cheerleading team. Uh, so <laughs> what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that? yeah, no, I, I firmly agree. I mean, especially in this industry, um, you know, um, fake it till you make it. I think that is like the number one sort of line. I mean, if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't bet on yourself, like nobody will. And, and especially in this industry, that is, um, you know, a lot of people trying to get into it and, uh, a lot of gatekeepers, as I call them, you know, you have to, um, you have to be confident and basically show them that, you know, I can do this. And, um, if you don't believe in yourself, Nobody will. So fake it till you make it. I like that because I think for especially people who are starting out in their late teens or e even a little bit earlier, you have that self-confidence and you you can actually 
do some really profound things early on in your career, which will take you places. And you, you can see that from some of the most prolific actors and actresses that are out there. So here you are, you're doing this, you're in your junior year, you're writing away. And now we're at a point where something has come out and become the, you know, you've won an award, best first feature film. And I'm excited to hear about this. Yeah, I mean, uh, with the film, so this was like uh, the sixth uh, film um, that I wrote. Um, and a lot of the things that I um, sort of wrote prior to this were more big budget. And I knew that I'd probably have to write something a little more smaller scale to get made. And so I was able to really, I was able to get some valuable information and get the movie made. And um, yeah, we got into the Malibu Film Festival and um, they announced. Uh, award winners list uh, back on the s- April 6th. And so I saw like the list that got announced and I was scrolling through it and, um, you know, I'm like, okay, well, you know, was, you know, me, I'm very pragmatic. I'm like, oh, we're not going to be on the list, whatever. And I was, uh, I was very shocked uh, to see us on the list, but that was great. And, um, and I never got a lot of, you know, congratulations and stuff from a lot of the cast and crew. And um, ultimately, you know, movie making is a very collaborative uh, art form. So, you know, I just kept saying team effort guys, team effort. And uh, so I was really happy and uh, surprised with that award. And I appreciate um, everyone at the Malibu Film Festival who supported the film. And uh, obviously they really liked it. So that was great. It is exciting. So Anthony, tell me a little bit about the film. We want to hear all about this. Yeah, so the film, uh, basically, um, the idea was to write something pretty small, um, because I didn't really go to, I I didn't go to film school, obviously, I majored in accounting, and and I, beginning my junior year, I was pretty uh, convinced that's what I wanted to do, and um, I sort of uh, made a hard pivot, you could say. Um, and yeah, so the next few years wrote a bunch of scripts and eventually it was like, I need to probably realistically write something that a producer or financier wouldn't have a problem with, you know, throwing a kid like me some money to go make it. (laughs) And luckily, uh, I was able to, um, get into contact actually with a, with a guy who's from like 15 minutes from where I'm from in Pennsylvania and he was out in LA and I got in contact with him and he's like a year older than me. We both grew up playing hockey, never knew each other. And his little sister went to my high school um, and my sis- and my sister was sort of friendly with her, I think. And, but I reached out to him and he, I told him about the idea cause he had just made his first uh, feature film, uh, a movie called Fortunate Son, um, which is on, uh, premiered at the Philadelphia Independent Film Festival and is oh, on hi. YouTube. And um, so he was like, yeah, let me check it out, send it to him. Uh, He liked it and he said, you can definitely do this on your own and shared with me the information on how he got his film made. And uh, basically then that was music to my ears that I could go make my own movie. And uh, so then I just went off, uh, off and running on that. And um, yeah, and then the idea really was just, okay, so like a fake documentary, you could lean in uh, to have a more low budget look to it. And uh, I know a lot of things about an Italian family and I can make it, you know, like a mockumentary, funny. And so that's really the core uh, of the idea came from. Okay, so what is the plot? Tell us, what, give us a little, a little bit tidbit about what's happening with your film. Sure. Uh, so the movie is about uh, a Italian American film school student who, for his end of the semester project, uh, decides that he's going to do it on Italian American culture and film his family. Um, and he's really passionate about the idea, but he also knows that his family can be, you know, very uncooperative. And so um, the whole movie is about uh, really him filming his family and um, trying to share some cultural stuff and a lot of, you know, and it takes place over Thanksgiving. Um, and so some holidays things and, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, I guess you would say inappropriate behavior from his family. And, um, and of course, uh, it's, um, it ends up, um, not entirely what he intended, but you'll, you see the movie and, you know, 
see what happens. But um, that's sort of the core idea of a student uh, filming his family for a school project. I love this. And so how did you come up with the concept of an Italian um, heritage piece? Yeah, it was just something I was trying to think of. Okay, so like a fake documentary. And, you know, obviously myself, you know, I come from uh, Italian American family. And um, I just knew that, you know, in order to make a movie for, you know, like a, a smaller budget, you know, it could be a contained uh, story that takes place, um, you know, in a single house. And um, so really just my sort of own, I guess, I, I mean, by no way is the movie a reflection of my upbringing, but, you know, there's bits and pieces and other like funny things that make it, you know, into the movie. But I, I figured that's something that I could do that I could write well um, in a very contained setting, such as, you know, 90% of the film takes place in the one house. And um, it's just, I just knew that it was something that um, I could write, could write very quickly on a low budget and, and, you know, try and make it as funny as possible. And so again, it's no way a reflection of my own life, but there is elements and some funny, you know, nuggets I put in there, but I knew that was something that I could do, or hopefully I was hoping that I could do, uh, do well. This is really exciting. I, I am just chomping to see it. Now I am not anywhere. And obviously the film festival has already been completed there in Malibu. So I'm wondering, do you have it in, uh, have you, submitted for other film festivals? Do you plan on launching it with anybody, um, a streaming network, doing through YouTube or anything where some of us who can't get to the locations on some of these places? Yeah, so uh, it is submitted to a handful of more festivals and I will be hearing back uh, over the next couple of months on that. And then once I hear back from them and hopefully get some more yeses, um, and they premiere there. So then after it's the, um, it's festival run, um, I'll probably look, uh, on, you know, getting it hopefully, you know, on a streamer somewhere or Amazon, um, somewhere then, you know, general public can, you know, see it, um, or rent it. Um, cause I definitely would like it to obviously reach, you know, a big, uh, you know, a biggest, you know, biggest audience as possible. Um, so that's sort of, uh, the idea. So, yeah. So if you were to share with the audience to head on over to Film Freeway, would they be able to look your film up there and see where it's going to be um, premiering yet? Um, on the Film Freeway yeah. um, site? Um, I'm actually, not, I actually will, a lot of the festivals you sort of submit through Film Freeway, but um, I'm not sure, I was, um, I'm not familiar with it, um, you know, being open to, the public and seeing um, if it premieres, that's news to me. Um, but no, I'm assuming I just that if wondered it, because if somebody's thinking, okay, I want to know where this is at and they start Googling film festivals and film freeway comes up. Usually I mean, that's a site where you're submitting um, and you know what festivals are coming up so that you can place a submission for your film. So the question then becomes, if the audience wants to see something, do you have a site, a website or a Facebook page or something where they can go and say, okay, I can see that these films that he has, uh, he's been working on are being submitted and they're going to premiere here or there. Uh, we do have a uh, Instagram page, a uh, Facebook page. Um, which is run by uh, Jennifer and um, and yeah, so she um, she runs those. So yeah, we have an Instagram page which is um, at the Ruggeros, um, and uh, I believe the Facebook um, is uh, the Facebook page is the Ruggeros um, as well. And um, whenever there's um, updates and things, you know, um, she posts about it on there, and it's uh, really great. Beautiful. So I, I have to ask about your ice hockey before we get into the. One of the final questions that I'm going to have for you, but I want to hear about how you got started doing that, if you're still doing it, and if any of your screenplays are kind of, you know, involve that at all. Um, yes, yeah, so how I got into ice hockey when I was younger. So my uh, my dad played 
Um, and so I think naturally as a kid, you know, him and, and my mom liked hockey too. So naturally they were trying to, I guess, push me in that direction, never forced me to play. And I just sort of at like nine years old, I was ready. Um, and so I grew up playing, um, school hockey and then eventual travel hockey as well. And, um, was able to play college club for, uh, four more years. And it was really great. A lot of fun. Um, it's not NCAA or anything, but we still get cool bus trips and get to play against other schools. And, uh, it was a really, you know, it's still very competitive hockey and, um, it was a very good extra four years that I got to play. And then afterwards, um, I did play some men's league, just local uh, rec league. And then, uh, but when I moved out to uh, LA, um, you know, I didn't really have time for it anymore. And I wasn't sure about what the hockey scene out there was. So uh, I don't play anymore. I mean, I do miss it. Um, I certainly would like uh, to play again. Uh, but as of right now, um, my hockey career is on hiatus. Um, and then as far as writing other scripts, um, I kind of separate the two. I, I mean, there's some really good hockey movies, uh, that I like, but, um, there's a big sort of, uh, learning curve and sort of production curve with getting that made. I mean, I think the best hockey movie is probably Miracle and it's easier to teach hockey players how to act than teach actors how to play hockey. So you got to do so the way that they did and, you know, they had to hold, you know, hockey tryouts. And then once the players passed, then they were making them act. And I don't know, it's just like, it's, it's a logistical challenge. Um, I'm sure a lot of Flyers fans um, in the Philadelphia area would love like a Broad Street Bullies movie. Um, but as of right now, um, uh, hockey is not something that I'm interested in making a movie. I think it would be a logistical uh, nightmare, but um, if I... Um, <laughs> But I mean, it's it would be something that's really cool and something I think I'd be really good at and could bring a lot of, I guess, knowledge to and authenticity as a writer and director. Uh, but um, I'd rather go make movies about other things. <laughs> so the Broad Street Bullies, we'll have to talk about that a little bit. But I want to talk about the John Lero candy store. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that was founded in 1916 by my great great grandfather. Um, when he they came over uh, to America in the late 1800s, and um, kind of how that happened was his father. So, my great 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 grandfather. Um, there was a whole sort of ordeal where he, so he was known in his town in Italy called Amalfeta. He was known as uh, Il Guadiano, which is the guardian. Oh. And um, he, I guess he was sort of some type of enforcer for this guy. And this guy was stealing, uh, this guy called the Spaniard was, fil- was uh, stealing his boss's uh, sheep. He went and it kind of got out of hand and he ended up shooting the guy, did not die. Oh my. Um, and basically because of the legal system back then in the late 1800s, he was heavily advised you should probably leave the country. Yeah, and he yeah. took, yeah, and he <laughs> took my great, great, his son, my great, great grandfather with him. And ultimately when they came over here, you know, he has to find work and, and uh, somehow he got into making uh, candy. And, um, there's, um, I'm trying to remember the park. Um, there's a park, uh, old school park in Philly. Um, I'm blanking on, uh, blanking on the name. I should remember because it's in the script. Um, but, uh, yeah, he got into making candy there. Uh, I think serving actual ice cream first. Um, and then eventually, um, the whole story he went back to Italy, served in the military, met my great, great grandma, oh. fell in love and then sort of brought, her family back to America and then eventually saved up enough money to open his own candy store. And there's other beats in there, story beats. It's actually a really interesting story. Um, but yeah, 1916, uh, started his own candy store. And um, so now our family uh, owns it's called the Lero Candy Company. Um, and it's a very uh, local thing within the South Philly area, and not a national thing, but it's been going strong for over a hundred years. And uh, it's really, really, really cool that I have a, you know, my family owns a candy company. I think that this is fascinating. So I just have to ask, 
a ton of questions about this because my sweet tooth is coming out and so is the <laughs> Italian in me. So yeah. my first and foremost question is, do you have Italian candy that I can order? That's what yeah, so um, <laughs> the two know main, <laughs> so the two big products that they make um, and sell, the two big staples. So um, we just had Easter um, and uh, coconut cream Easter eggs. Um, that is uh, one of the things that uh, they do. And so Easter is like uh, the winter time gearing up for uh, Easter is like the busiest season for them at the factory. Uh, but they do, yeah, coconut cream eggs. And I'm actually not uh, a fan of coconut cream very much, but they do make these um, small, like dark chocolate coconut cream eggs. Like, and like they come in like a tray and they're like to die for. So I'll eat those. Um, and then also, and um, chocolate covered pretzels. And they're the best chocolate covered pretzels you'll ever have. Everyone always says, I always tell everyone that. They're like, are you sure? And I'm like, yes. And they always have it. And everyone always says these are the best you'll ever have. So uh, really coconut cream eggs and chocolate covered pretzels are the two big products. Uh, but you can go online uh, to lyricandy.com and they have a whole like selection of things you can order online. Um, and, um, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, you know, uh, brag about or say everything we make is awesome. But I can tell you that the coconut cream and the chocolate, uh, chocolate covered pretzels uh, caramel clusters, chocolate covered raisins. They're all, uh, 10 out of 10. Excellent. I love it. I love it. I'm going to encourage everybody to check this out because I, I think that this is really neat. Now I've got a, another question for you. And if you're not doing this, I really think you should. And that is <laughs> that you should have your, your company. If you don't already create a specific candy with the title of your movie as that particular candy. Interesting. Um, so the, uh, the, so I can tell that the, the title of the movie based on the life of my great, great grandfather is um, the chocolatier. Um, that was a name um, I sort of, um, I sort of settled on, or at least a working title um, as now, but I really hope that, um, in the future, you know, um, you know, if I ever get that movie made, um, you know, that would be really cool to, you know, show a lot of like old school family photos at the end. And, you know, it, honestly, at the end, be like a promo for uh, Lero Candy. Um, yes. and I think that would be, um, that's really cool. Cause there's a lot of, um, my grandpa's cousin is like, I guess like the family historian and he has like this whole, uh, he actually gave it to my grandfather and yeah, my grandfather and uh, a lot of family photos and really cool things and um, really wrote like a whole sort of history rough outline. And so that's how I was able to really take the beats of the story and and uh, make it. And it's uh, it's really great. So I hope um, that at the end of the movie we could do that. And yeah, that would be really awesome if yeah. when the movie gets made to do like a special, you know, like a special candy thing on the website. Yeah. That'd be really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm picturing sort of whatever the title is of your screenplay and you have some specialty candy or gum or something. And it's launched at the same time that you premiere your film. And yeah. So that would be, that would be really awesome. Yeah. You've got this whole line for, each one of the films and you can do all these different things with it and sort of, I, I don't know. I mean, oh, yeah, so I even, know. um, so you're, so you're saying even with the, the, uh, the Ruggiero's movie, um, yes. as well. You could wow, do it. Okay. Yeah. I didn't bubble that, gum, or, you know, one of the characters <laughs> that's in there and, you know, have this sort of little thing going, nobody's doing it. You heard it here first on Rebecca sounds Reveille. I tell you, uh, I, I mean, I that, really that sounds like a great idea. Um, We'll see. Um, I don't know what the logistics are um, with that, but that's, I mean, I think that sounds cool. <laughs> well, I think it would be neat. And I really think it would be a lot of fun at some of the events that you do, as well as it could be becoming collector's items, depending on how you create something that goes with it. I mean, this could be a whole thing. And I mean, you've got an opportunity here. And the thing that I want to tie all of this around with what you're doing, not only do you have a best feature film, you're 
is continuing to pursue a love that you started, that you've been really dedicated to developing within yourself. You believe yourself, you're promoting yourself, you're building your confidence. That is the first and foremost. And the second thing is you cooperate with somebody else in your industry and you're not only learning from that person, but but sharing things. And that person is substantiating the confidence that you have that you're developing within yourself. And I think that those two things in itself are really the recipe, that sweet candy recipe for all of us inside to get us where we want to go. Yeah, no, that's, that's really great. Yeah. And, um, you know, cause I worked on his other film, Annihilation of Self, which is still in post-production and working on that film as a production assistant, uh, which was before I filmed my movie, uh, that like was total, you know, that was a total confidence booster. And, um, that was a very, very valuable experience. And, um, and his name, um, the filmmaker uh, was mentioned earlier, his name is Mark Manjardi, a very great guy. Uh, a lot of valuable knowledge and um, has been a great um, ally in my corner. And um, and I can't wait to see uh, his film, his next film come out because it was quite a, quite a journey. I, I am really excited to see, speaking of journeys, where your journey takes you because you've got a lot of things that you're doing. You're making things happen. You're not sitting here saying, you know, I wish I could, or I wrote this, but I don't know what to do. You're investigating, you're getting out there, you're getting involved. What do I need to do? Okay. I can't create this first. So I've got to do something on a low budget and this way. And all of those things are stepping stones, they're building blocks to getting where you, you want to go. And you've got all of this talent, this internal creativity, these, I mean, the self-drive, you got it. I want to see your journey and I want our audience too. And I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Please tell us where we can follow everything that you got going on. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you can. Um, so as far as uh, the Ruggiero's movie, as I said prior, you can follow us on uh, Facebook um, and Instagram, which under the Instagram is at the Ruggiero's, um, just um, no spaces or anything. Um, and then you can follow uh, myself on my Instagram, uh, which is uh, linked um, to uh, the Ruggiero's Instagram as well. You can find me there, but also it's uh, my um, at, I guess, is at um, a l. E-R-R-O-815. Um, that is uh, my Instagram. And um, yeah, and uh, that is where I will be posting and doing other cool things as well. So I love it. Thank you so much for sharing all of this exciting, sweet concoctions with us that you've got <laughs> going. I love this. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, th- thanks for having me, Rebecca. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of Rebecca Sounds Reveille, where we're always delivering something sweet to make your life a little bit different and better. And well, if you take some of the stuff that we were talking about today in moderation, that will be healthy as well for you. Thanks for tuning in. I ask that you share this with everybody you know, your friends, your family, people on social media, and everybody that you don't.